All right, everyone. So now is the time for IoT and mobile keynote session. So if you are looking into providing secure remote access to network devices from anywhere, literally anytime, even when the primary network is down, then you are at the right place because our next keynote speaker has got your back. We are pleased to welcome Todd Raichekhi, the Vice President of Sales at OpenGear, and he's here to share his views on taking it to the edge. But before that, we have a quick video for you. Enjoy it. Thank you. To build a resilient network, you need an intelligent IT architecture. That's why we're talking about your network's RQ. A common definition of network resilience is the ability to provide and maintain an acceptable level of service in the face of faults and challenges to normal operation. At least, that's what Wikipedia says. What it probably means to you is how to minimize the cost and pain of an outage by keeping downtime to a minimum. Aberdeen Research found that every hour of downtime costs a typical company $260,000, not to mention the frustration it causes your customers and the number of angry calls and emails you get from the operations team. A good network RQ can keep that in check. Network resilience is a broad term. It includes the reliability of components, the use of redundant systems, the accessibility of your locations, and the ease of remediation. There is no one solution. It requires a combination of design and operational processes to maximize your network availability. Network RQ is a way of looking at all the elements of network resilience and explaining their impact to others in the organization. It's a set of resources and language to help you succeed in building a reliable infrastructure. Network RQ. How smart is your network? Hi, it's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Todd Rychek. I'm the VP of Sales for the Americas. I'll be talking about the latest market trends in network management and best practices to help customers achieve network resilience. I settled into the networking and technology space about 20 years ago. And before that, I was an account manager at Cardinal Health, who's a pharmaceutical distributor, and Daytex Omita, who sold anesthesia monitors um, to the operating room, and which ultimately became GE Healthcare. And, and then WorldCom. I started at Open Gear in 2008, was their first sales and marketing hire. For the next 13 years, we grew Open Gear organically through profits and built it in the number one brand in out of band management. I'll be talking about the latest market trends in network management and best practices to help customers to achieve network resilience. I settled into the networking and technology space 20 years ago. But before that, I was an account manager at Cardinal Health, who's a pharmaceutical distributor. Daytex and Meta, which became part of the GE Healthcare Business Unit, and then WorldCom. I started at Open Gear in 2013. I started to I started at Open Gear in 2013 and grew Open Gear organically through profits and built it into the number one brand in out of band management. A friend of mine in San Francisco built this program to demonstrate the growth of the edge from 1997 to 2021. And what you can see here is really, really astonishing growth. And all these connections are uh, internet routes. Uh, so notice how dense the, particularly the middle, the back backbone, the core is, and then how dense the, the edge has become um, over the years, uh, the past 25 years. Now, the, the backbone is in white here in the middle, uh, the core, blue is North America, green is Europe, and red is Asia Pacific. Africa is in yellow. So again, you can see how what once was sort of localized to the United States in many ways has now grown to the point where we have uh, edge locations in just about every spot around the world. This is a 10 second clip of the past five years. And again, this just highlights how quickly the internet is growing and expanding. And this growth and rapid rise in cloud adoption and new edge data centers is making it more vital and challenging to ensure network resilience. Market trends. 
Digital transformation. Five years of digital transformation in five months. In 2020, there was 35% increase in the global internet bandwidth. Just for perspective, that number was 26% in 2019. Um, but every company out there is really, really trying to become a digital company. It's the only way that they're going to survive today. And it surprised me has really been the speed of the innovation in the past 12 months. Anything that was physical, like a retail store, has moved to online. Um, that's the transition that we're seeing. So retail, entertainment, healthcare, education. Um, this is something that personally I've never seen in my career, the speed of this adoption. And cloud adoption has increased um, investments in advanced automation uh, solutions for reducing a lot of the, the manual intervention with the network. So remote access becomes very critical to support this so that the, the they can scale up their their network and, and their business. So we're seeing a lot more investments in automation, cloud, remote access. Um, in business, as you know, it's either disrupt or get disrupted. Um, Home Depot's goal uh, here is put deliveries and distribution centers closer to the customers. So they're trying to deliver to 90% of the US population in the same day. Target and Walmart are doing the same thing with e-commerce delivery and pickup services, again, in the, in the neighborhoods that you live in. Walmart CEO, I heard him last week, he spoke about doing the same thing. And really, they are relying heavily on automation to scale up their business and get these distribution centers in place. Because all the kinds of these businesses are being forced to rethink how they do their, how they handle their business and their business models as a result of the pandemic, CEO, CEOs are also reevaluating their strategies and reinventing themselves as digital first companies and technology companies. The business climate, though, in 2020 really showed and highlighted the importance of your supply chain. And what you really want to do here is decrease your risk and Utilize multiple contract manufacturers, which we do, and get your components from different places around the country, around the world, and spread it out throughout many geographies. In addition, network evolution, data centers and networks um, were more centralized 15 years ago. Today, they are distributed globally. And from the diagram here uh, that I showed you earlier and you see on this slide, you can see there's a lot more potential points of failure in the network today than there was 20 years ago. Companies that we hear about, um, they're limiting air travel. Businesses don't stop. So they have to figure out ways to bring up an important service, for example, like say in the Netherlands. So they're trying to do this and trying to do it securely, these remote deployments, so that they can bring up new applications, new revenue generating services, and things like this. And to accomplish this, one of the things they're doing is they're using what's called a, a TPM chip, a tamper-proof module, and they load their configurations on it. They send it out on an airplane, gets met by a, another employee at the other end, and then they use zero-touch zero touch provisioning functionality to load it and kick off the software. There are two primary planes on a network. The independent management plane is one of them. The production network is the other. We used to call the production, the uh, and I'm sorry, the independent management plane, out of band management network for years. However, out of band management's grown up, and now we call it an independent management plane. And this is separate again from the the production network. And this is really really important because you don't want to manage the network with the network. It, it just defeats the whole purpose of network resilience. You want to do this through an independent management plane, and not where the, all the traffic is at on that production network. But network resilience is really, really business critical. We know that today, now more than ever. No network, no business. And a resilient network ensures business continuity that boosts your revenue. And by boosting your revenue, um, this gives you the opportunity to stay competitive in the market. And it's, it's also um, a very important aspect of, of running a successful business. Uh, one second here. There we go. Market trends, network resilience. So end to the core. 
in the beginning, a lot of the network resilience was at the core of the network. And we talked about that for the most part as being the most important part of the um, of the business. But now, as companies have expanded, they had 100 sites in, um, you know, that they're trying to deploy uh, infrastructure to. Might, 70 of them might be in the U.S., 25 in, in, um, in Europe, and five in Asia PAC. Um, so now what they're looking for is end-to-end, core-to-edge network resilience. 4G LTE is very important in this because that independent management plane to get there gives them that remote access, but also provides failover for them. Um, a big, big emphasis right now is automation. Um, it's really, really important to automate. And we are seeing significantly uh, strong sales with colo providers, uh, companies like Equinix, Digital Realty, uh, Iron Mountain, uh, hyperscale customers like AWS, Microsoft, Oracle, Apple, um, Facebook, these are the types of customers that are looking for this sort of network resilience. Global enterprise customers who are extending their their local reach, getting closer to, again, where their customers are located. The cloud, it's all about the cloud, private, public, and multi-cloud. And the real question is, is there really any other way? And I don't think there will be for the next 10 years. Today, everybody talks about software as a service, everything as a service. It is the business model of the decade. and Customers who buy products like it this way and customers or companies that sell products like it this way. So I see this to continue. Remote access is very, very critical in this entire um, trend because if, if your business isn't up, if the edge isn't up, then, then the business isn't up. And you need to be able to keep your services up and running. But also when they're not running, to be able to connect and remediate quickly. Zero touch management. People don't want to touch anything. They don't want to touch any device. And the less they touch it, the better. Market opportunities. Spotting business opportunities. Most of the investments in the next three years that we're seeing are going to be at the edge. And the be reason for that is there's a lot more applications at the edge. And in order to do that, they're going to have to invest significantly in, in router switches, firewalls, SD-WAN, network resilience, to keep the to continue to, to scale these businesses up, but also provide that resilience so that there's that same sort of high availability that you see in the data center today out at the edge. Top DevOps tools. So this basically summarizes areas where we play in 2021. Um, we're trying to accelerate delivery and we're using automation tools to do it. So if you're a reseller and you hear the word Ansible, Puppet or Chef, Docker, you hear Azure, Python, or an API, that's a trigger that tells you they're looking to do some sort of automation. There's DevOps teams, that's the software team. NetOps teams is the network team, and IT ops is the IT operations team. So there's really three teams now in a network environment, and they're all working together. And this is what the customer profile kind of looks like for an automation engineer versus the classic network engineer. Notice Ramya um, is a NetOps engineer who was a programmer who got into networking, whereas Benoit is a network engineer, has always been a network engineer and is, and is still doing it today. So you're sort of seeing this separate and the roles and responsibilities within the organization are defined a little bit differently. So that's how the profiles are changing. Also, when you're prospecting, other keywords to look for in like a, a, um, a LinkedIn uh, profile, for example, would be keywords that refer to automation. Um, in the cloud network automation, open source, Ansible, Docker, I point them out here, uh, APIs. This, again, these are good, good points, good triggers for you to say, look, these guys are looking for a solution that um, allows them to do orchestration and automate their, their processes and their deployments. And the OM, the OM2200, which is one of the boxes and solutions that we sell, sort of checks all these boxes, the smart out of band plus the net ops. Um, and together, before we were just selling the, the smart out of band, but now with the net ops integration that we put in here and the tools that we put into here, it's brought these three groups together to work together and, and provide them a, a way to do remote access, automation, deploy services, and ensure that most important business continuity. So growing together, 
Open Gear and Network Resilience, the fastest growing and number one provider of IT infrastructure solutions in the market today, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we started out selling out of band, then we made it smart. We made it smart by incorporating uh, 3G, LT, or 3G uh, GSM back in 2010. Uh, now doing LTE today, 4G, uh, but also the failover component that you get from an L, uh, LTE uh, experience as well. But we've also now realized from working with lots of large customers that they not only want to use the, the console server for smart art of band, but they want to use it to deploy a stack of, you know, a thousand switches in the data center. And so we can provide them with things like Docker, Ansible, and Python. And then the secure provisioning is part of that too, and being able to do that provisioning remotely. The growth and innovation of the organization um, for the past 13 years. Our messaging today is, as I mentioned, is Smart Out of Band plus NetOps together. Um, we are the number one brand in Smart Out of Band with 50% overall market share today. Um, this chart on the right is actually our sales chart or revenue chart. I don't have the revenue numbers here, uh, but uh, what you can see here is an incredible story, an incredible growth chart. And something that uh, I want to just say here to the, all the partners that are listening in is how important um, it is for us to, to share this good news with you because we want nothing more than to get you guys on this same growth path with us and enjoy the revenue that, it, that these sort of solutions can generate for your organization. Lots of new enterprise customers every year, 75% of the Fortune 500 or Fortune 100, in fact, a very strong financial support. Uh, we joined forces with Digi International um, in November of 2019, and they acquired us for 140 million. Uh, we've been offering advanced zero touch provisioning support for uh, about six years now, 2015. We actually pioneered this zero touch provisioning and worked with Apple. Uh, to to actually, in my opinion, put together the best implementation of Z ZTP on the market. So really what it is, is it's, it's, it's hands-free deployments and automating that whole configuration management process. We pioneered cellular out of band in 2010. Before that, everyone was using basically POTS lines. They were using analog phone lines to get into their, their router switch and they dial it up. Um, and we changed the entire market. Uh, in 2010. And today we offer global 4G LTA support. Um, so all over the world, we can deploy our, our solutions. We have a formal 32 business, a 32 page business continuity plan. Now this is important. Some of the people in the space don't have one. Um, and not only do we have one, but we actually test it a couple times a year to make sure that in the event of a pandemic, for example, uh, we we're able to react and still fulfill orders for customers. An established supply chain, uh, this, this is very important, especially when you're in a pinch, like, like we were last year, everybody was. So you better make sure that you have an established supply chain, and we do. And we offer also a four-year warranty on all of our products. Um, we have global sales, global tech support, global partner channels, and then also a global country certifications. But most importantly, people can say they have a global country certification and can get it into India, for example. But do they have the paperwork? That's very, very important. A lot of big companies today want to see the paperwork, um, and we've taken the time and spent the money to do that. Why out of band and remote access? Well, today our products are used to do two things, solve a business problem and avoid extended business disruptions. So solving a business problem might be bringing up a new data center in the Netherlands and avoiding an extended business disruption. You got a site that's down. How long does it take you? As my next bullet says here, does it take you 10 minutes to fix it? Or does it take you 10 hours? If you got a solution like Open Gear, you know, deployed at the remote site, it's only going to take you a few minutes. And that's very, very important. Um, keeping that competitive edge. Uh, CEOs at, at Fortune 500 companies are very competitive, competitive people. Um, they're, they're, this is like a game to them. They're, it's like they're playing hockey. Um, they spend a lot of money on AI, MI storage, and these are all great tools. But the reality is, if your network's down, you can't use any of this and you can't get that real-time response that you need. So they understand how important it is to make sure that they have an audit ban or a remote access solution in their network. And a resilient business. Audit ban, in my opinion, is the foundation of a resilient business. And if you don't have it, you're, you don't have resilience. Channel partners, the future's bright, especially here in Canada. Since 2017, we've had 100% growth. We've doubled our sales and new deployments. We've had 15% of North American resellers are now located in Canada. 
We hired a regional sales manager, Joel Shepard, who lives in Ottawa. Really like this guy, great energy, get to know him. We have an established stocking distributor in Cinex. Account mapping with partners. We do this all the time. Where do, the, where do we connect? Where do the dots connect? Who do you know that I know and who do you know that I don't know? Let's shorten that sales cycle. And then getting wider, deeper, higher within your existing accounts. Let's do that. Let's do that together. Deal registration. We have a deal registration. You bring us into a net new opportunity. We haven't been working it. We don't know anything about it. We'll give you extra uh, revenue or I'm sorry, a margin to, to close that deal. SD WAN plus smart out of band. Open Gear loves SD WAN. It's one of the biggest opportunities right now for our solutions. And um, we're seeing many, many customers, not only when they buy a Silver Peak, they're buying an Open Gear because they're looking, there's not just a router out there. There's still a stack of switches. There's still a PDU. There's a UPS system. All those need out of band management. And then profiting from technology trends. There's, this is really important. I think when you see something like uh, what happened last year, what's the first thing that came to mind? You know, people couldn't get in their data centers. They couldn't get into their labs. They needed remote access. So we can profit off of that and we can present that to customers. It's a very simple ROI for them. And then our OM2200 pipeline is building. It's building rapidly. We, we launched this product in May of last year and uh, uh, we have a $26 million pipeline today. So please join us in, in helping us sell these products. In North America in 2020, we had a number of really nice wins. You know, who's buying these products? Um, lots of people have, have evaluated them. They vetted them. They determined that these are going to work for their environment. The top line here is Canada. So we did British Columbia Lottery, uh, Colliers International, New Brunswick Government, Shopify, I think is in Ottawa as well. And then Shared Services Canada has been working on a number of rollouts of our product. But also you can see Johnson & Johnson, Starbucks, Home Depot, and and even State Farm. The thing that I want to highlight here is notice there's not one particular vertical market. It's very horizontal. It's anyone really that has network infrastructure out at the edge and has a router or switch. Sales coach. So as a sales coach, one of the things I do is I try to direct my team in the right direction. And I know that people on this call probably are doing the same thing as managers and even as sales reps with their customers. So targeting the right businesses or essential businesses is really important. And customers and prospects who have the budget. <laughs> we don't want to call on a customer who is locked down and doesn't have the budget. So one of the things we did is, is we pivoted in about March, like, so, like a lot of people did, and we focused our attention on what was hot. And I actually put a list together of what was hot and what was not. And obviously the stuff that was hot was the cable providers, streaming and gaming, grocery stores, financial services, and a few select retails and restaurants. What was not is all the other retail and restaurants and, and other venues like movie and concerts, and particularly the transportation industry, as you know, got hit hard. So why would you want to spend a lot of time calling on Air Canada, American or United when they're locked down and they're not flying? I know this sounds like common sense, but you'd be surprised the amount of people that will spend time doing that. So really, really important to focus on who's successful right now in this environment. Why well, recommend Open Gear? Well, we are the leader in network resilience solutions and we've been doing this for a very long time. We understand what it takes to not only provide a, a smart out of band solution, but also to automate that process. And network resilience is really, really important and, and employing a, a 4G LTE backbone to do it is, is the best way to do it. Um, and using that independent management plane to do it as well. As the pioneer of cellular out of band management, I believe that we do this better than anyone in the world. And have been doing it now for 11 years. So if your customers want to reduce truck rolls and um, shorten up deployments, improve uptime, then we are a great solution to, to look to, to look for. Uh, we really look forward to working with you. And um, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Um, thank you for, thank you to the event uh, coordinators. Thank you for the channel partners. And thank you Canada for having me today. Thank you.